This is the aluminium channel that I'll be using on the line bender. So we need two pieces of timber cutting the exact length of that. I've now just cut a trench in this piece of timber so that we can place the wire in there like that. That can then pass from one side of the line bender to the other. To do that I use the circular saw and I actually set the depth like so using the base plate and I then did two passes from one end to the other and that has given us that channel from one end to the other. We're now going to take the wire that we're using and I've stripped off some of the insulation I'm now going to bend back the conductor on itself so that we get a good contact because the actual lug that we're using is too large for this particular wire. So I'm going to push that into there and then I'm going to crimp that on. That is now crimped on there, we've now got a good contact. We can now take the board and we can now run the wire into the channel that we made earlier and then we can flip that back over. I'm now going to use a combined drill and countersink and I'm going to drill six holes in this piece of timber. We're now just going to check we've got this piece in the correct position so I've got it about two and a half inches from that end and it's also square with this edge on the bottom board. So we can now screw that into position. So that board is now firmly fixed and as you can see we can quite easily move the wire in and out of the channel. This is a piece of aluminium channel that I bought. The nichrome wire will eventually run down that. This is a little bit on the shallow side because of the wood that I'm using. The wood that I'm using is actually scrap pieces. So that is slightly thicker than what I would have used normally. So we're going to have to pack this up using a few washers. Before we do that, I'm just going to drill three fixing holes in it. So I've now packed that up on the washers and I'm now going to screw in the countersunk screws. I've now placed the hinges in position and I've put one screw in already. The knuckle on the hinge is dead in the centre of the aluminium track. I'm now just going to pile it all, all the holes using an hinge sighting drill. Then I'm going to put the screws in the hinges. You'll notice that I'm using a screwdriver for this, that's because I haven't actually got the correct sized bit for the drill. I should point out that it's important when you're fitting the hinges to get them completely square. So I've always used the edge of the material there which I know is cut squarely to align the hinges. I'm now just going to drill a really small hole which is about a two millimeter hole over here to the side out of the way of anything. So eventually a stop will be placed on there. So I'm just going to drill an hole up here in the corner out of the way. And then I'm actually going to sink a magnet into there and that will keep the hinged parts of the line bender in the down position when I come to store it away. I'm now going to take a drill bit that's roughly the same diameter as the magnet that we're going to be using and then I'm going to drill an all. I'm now just going to apply some super glue around the all. Then I'm going to place the magnet in and just tap that in using a soft faced hammer. So that screw wall now will meet up with the magnet that we've just installed. I'm just going to drill and countersink it so that the screw head fits flush. I can now drive a screw in there and when the line bender is in the open position 
that screw will pick up on the magnet. We can now ensure that this piece is in the correct position so it's touching the actual channel there at the front and it's nice and square. Then we can use the inserting drill just to drill one hole. We'll just do that in each hinge. And then we'll just put one screw in each hole and we'll just test it before we actually put the other four screws in. We can now just test that to make sure that it works correctly. And as you can see that lifts up nice and squarely. So we can now proceed to drill the other holes and put the rest of the screws in. I'm now going to use an engineer square to mark the centre of the channel and then we get the screw in the correct position for the nichrome wire. So I'm just going to scribe a light line down there and I'm going to do the same at the other end. I'm now just going to drill a small pilot hole at each end I'm going to open the hole up using the correct size drill bit for the thread inserts. We can then screw in the wood insert. You don't need to use wood inserts if you don't want, you can just use normal slotted screws. I've now used an M6 screw with a slotted head and I've placed that in there so that the line is dead in line with the centre of the channel. I'm now going to hold that tight. You'll notice that I've also put a nut on there that we can use as a lock nut. So I'm now just going to tighten up that nut and that will ensure that the screw does not move. I've now stripped off some more insulation. I'm now going to bend the conductor back on itself and then I'm going to place that inside of the lug. You'll notice that I've drilled a few more holes in here. Those two are to hang it up when we're finished with it. That one will be for one of the connections and then the other electrical connection will go there with the spring in between. We're going to use a spring to tension this because when the nichrome wire is heated it expands. So we're just going to use the M6 screw through there and we're just going to put the nut on there loosely. That is just so that we can actually lock the screw in position. We can now screw that down onto the board. I'm now going to feed the nichrome wire through the channel from this side. I'm now going to tie a loop in this end. And then I'm going to hook that over the actual screw and then I'm going to pull that tight. And then I'm going to pull the wire back. And I'm going to hook that so that it's actually in the slot. Once it's in the slot you can then wrap any excess around the screw. We're now going to pull the wire so it's nice and tight and then at this end we're going to cut it to length. We're now going to make a loop in the end of it.
I'm going to make sure it's in the slot and then we're going to hook the spring onto the loop. I've also just added an aluminium stop that is actually square with the actual nichrome wire so I've put the square on there got that completely square we now know that if we put a piece of acrylic on there for bending the nichrome wire is going to be completely square to that stop this is the completed line bender you can see that I've actually upped up the power to that terminal there but I've actually bypassed the spring there because we don't want to be wasting any electric so that has been clipped onto the nichrome wire there once we turn the power supply on you will then see that the nichrome wire that's in the channel starts to glow red hot and I'll turn on the power supply just turn up the voltage a bit and you can see that as the voltage increases the nichrome wire is now eating up nicely you might just have to experiment a bit until you get the correct voltage for the nichrome wire that you're using if you use a too thick of a, a nichrome wire it may be impossible to eat it up with some power supplies.